Hi everybody, it's Eugene Leisho, and today I'd like to show you how you can use Photomodeler or photogrammetry to solve a bullet trajectory rod problem. Uh, so if you have some bullet holes and you have trajectory rods through them, you can use photogrammetry to solve for the vertical and horizontal angles. The process is really not that difficult. Uh, it involves taking photographs of the bullet trajectory rods, uh, taking different angled shots, then bringing them into Photomodeler, and in Photomodeler you need to mark uh, some points and then you need to uh, reference those points so basically tell uh, the software which points in what photographs are the same and once you have enough points that are referenced you can solve for the project and from there you can start marking additional things like um, the trajectory rods themselves or targets or or whatever it is or you know depending on how your setup is, is, uh, is done so uh, I'm going to start. Uh, basically, when you open up Photomodeler, you have this getting started screen. I'm going to go to standard project, and I'm going to add photos. So when I, once I do that, a window will open here. And I'm going to get to what I need to do here. Just a moment. And so I've got four photographs that I'm opening up. And I'm just going to hit next. Now it's telling me that all the photos were automatically matched with a camera from my camera library. So I already have a calibrated camera that I use to take this photograph and that's a good idea if you're going to be doing this type of project but um, uh, that, that's covered in a different section or you can look that up on the photo model site. I'm just going to hit OK and it should load up the photos for me here. Now I'll just uh, have a look at the photographs just to understand how the photos were taken. And so what I have is a just a, a section of wall that I've built and um, I have, you can see here, placed some targets on the wall and those are just going to help me to uh, solve for the same points. Now I didn't have to use uh, targets actually, but you'll find that if you do use just you know sticky dots or uh, automated targets, it'll make life a lot simpler for you. Uh, what you'll notice here too is that I have uh, an aluminum quarter inch rod going through uh, there's a number of holes here so I've, on a few of them and I've got different marking methods or different things that I want to show you so here we've got spheres uh, these are foam spheres that are drilled through the center and when you put them on the rod you can actually solve for the spheres I have just a plain rod itself and we can use some tools in Photomodel to mark that and further down uh, I've got a special photogrammetry target and you'll see that um, there's one here that has four targets on it and one at the tip that is centered on the tip is just a single target and the idea here is that if I have one two three four targets on the uh, crossed style target uh, those four points when you when connected will scribe the circumference of a circle and once we can we can tell photomodeler to create a perfect circle and calculate the center so we can calculate from the center of the circle and the tip with this other target to create a straight line and we can calculate the angles that way. Now you notice too that the four photographs were taken from different angles so that is an important point too. Make sure that you take good angles maybe about 30 degrees between each photograph and you're going to want to work with a minimum minimum of three photographs four is a, is a good number. Um, you're not going to want to work with uh, you know 12 or 15 photographs uh, since if you're doing it manually that's going to be a little bit cumbersome. Okay so before I get started what I'm going to do is down in the, in the bottom right here there's this little uh, icon where there's like a man running and I'm going sh to shut him off. That's for automatic processing. I like to mark all the points and, and reference them and once I have enough points then um, I will do the processing myself as opposed to having the software do it automatically. That's just, that's just my preference. If you like to do it other ways, uh, that's fine. So there's different modes to marking here and I'll show you one thing. So for example, when I zoom in onto the corner of this panel, okay, you can use shortcut keys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and, and 1 is select. Two, if I click on the two, that's this icon up here, that's mark points mode. So that's manual marking. I just need to uh, click in the corner here and uh, click. I'll do the same thing for all four corners. So I'll go up here like that. And you're going to want to zoom in as best as you can. Uh, now I'm using just the mouse wheel on the view here. But another thing that you can do is if you put the mouse over the area that you're interested in and just hit the Alt key, a window opens up that uh, gives you the magnified view and that that's often uh, helpful and pretty speedy here so I'll use that here I'll get the corner down about here so I've marked those four points manually now the second thing that I want to do to mark 
uh, is in this case because I have these circular targets there is a mode that I can use called sub pixel target mode and the shortcut key is S so I'm gonna go into that mode and all I need to do here is just click on the center of the circle and drag this window out around it and you'll see that a point ends up on the center now I would warn you that if you're going to be doing this um, be careful in that you just want to look at the uh, point that's created and make sure that it is in the center. Sometimes if you don't have a good uh, contrast point then um, you may find that it goes off to one side or something like that or if the lighting is, is poor the contrast is poor uh, but I think it really comes down to contrast so if you have a black target on a white surface that's obviously the best here I've got a dark blue uh, target on a uh, you know well it's not quite white but it's it's a light enough background that it makes a, a good contrast so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue doing all these circular targets and all you can see here is that I'm just clicking and dragging on each one and um, that's that's what I'm just gonna keep doing and I'm not gonna be doing the the cylinder or the spheres or the targets at this time but the targets are actually in fact the same okay so you're just gonna grab it and drag it around but I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna press pause and just continue doing this and once I'm done I'll come back Okay, so we're back here and I've got all the circular targets that are on the face of the wall, uh, the trajectory wall marked, and I've also done the four corners of the trajectory wall here. And uh, I haven't done anything else, I haven't done any of the targets uh, and so forth. Uh, I just want to start with the uh, sort of the, the, the basic uh, wall part and then build up from there. So now that everything is marked, what I want to do is start to reference all the points from one photograph to another. So I'm just going to start by hitting the select, going to select mode 1, uh, hitting the 1 key. I just have a habit of doing this, but um, clicking on one point, and then I'm just going to hit reference. Okay, now what will happen is uh, this first image that was active when I clicked reference uh, becomes the reference image. So um, as I move over, you'll see there's like a little string that attaches the, uh, the mouse here. Uh, to the cursor, but there's also this little panel, this referencing control panel that comes up and if you already have your points marked and you don't want to accidentally create another point what I would recommend is click on this drop, uh, drop down arrow and click on select and this will only allow you to select points so I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna just click on this point which is the same as this point which is the same as this point here and I can just go through and maybe I'll do the other corner. I'll start with the corners first. Go through and do the same thing. Now be careful. Uh, you can reference these in any order you want. You can even stop here and go to a different photograph. But it's always best to have some kind of an organized uh, uh, process when you do this just so it keeps uh, straight in your head because it's very easy to mix these up uh, at this point. And that's often a a cause of uh, pain and suffering afterwards when you're trying to process it and figure out uh, you know where you mark something wrong so uh, another a little shortcut key that you can use is shift F and shift F will actually frame all the photographs fully in the view so as you zoom in I'll just do that one and I'll do this one now I'm zoomed in already on all of them but I'm just gonna hit shift F and it, they all jump back uh, so that they're in full view again and I'll start doing these ones to get them a little bit faster. Now once I have enough points uh, marked or referenced, I should say, you'll see the little window will pop up. I mean, you don't see it. It, it pops off my uh, screen here that I'm recording. It's out in the bottom right corner of my monitor. But um, it's telling you, hey, you've got enough points now that you might be able to process. Um, I usually don't process with the minimum amount of points. I just usually just go in and pick um, more than that. And what's the minimum? Well, you know, if you're down at like six, seven sets of points, that's usually pretty low. So I would recommend doing about at least a dozen of points that are well spread out in the view. So I'm just going to keep going here. And you'll see that. Okay. So I've got all the ones on the outer edges. I'll do the two that are on the interface here, like that. And I'll do these ones here. Now, another thing that you can do is on the there's a little icon here called visibility if you click on that you can choose IDs and that'll give you all the numbers of the points and I'm gonna shut down on referencing I'm just gonna go to uh, uh, back to the uh, select mode and there's other things you can turn off and on but IDs is probably one of the most useful because you can see which point is which in each of the photographs so I have enough points 
uh, reference now, I am going to go up to Project and Process. The shortcut key is F5. Okay, and I'm just going to choose the defaults and hit Go Ahead, and let's see what happens. Okay, well, it's telling me that I've got uh, my final error, 5.69, but really what you should be looking at is the maximum uh, residual, which is 1.73 here in Photo 9. So um, that's not bad, it's not great. So um, I'm going to have a look at that and see you know, how we can fix it. So if I click on this, you'll see that the point actually um, lights up. So 0.9 lights up. Okay, so as I zoom in to 0.9 on Photo 4, you'll notice here there's one point that has been marked and you'll see the rod crosses over part of the the target here. So I'm suspecting that this is part of the problem, that it can't uh, actually find the center of this point exactly. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually not going to use this point. I'm going to select it, and I'm just going to hit the delete key and knock it out. And you'll see that my max residual has gone down to 0.92. So that's something that I'll, I'll live with for now without being too picky uh, so that we can keep moving on. And once I delete it, I just reprocess by hitting F5, and it's gone down to 0.78, which is, which is pretty good. So let me look back here and now we'll continue the process and that is going to be marking the spheres marking the cylinders and then marking the uh, trajectory targets the trajectory photogrammetry targets so in order to use the the spherical marking uh, if you go to this drop down here where we were doing the sub pixel before there's sphere target marking uh, sphere target marking mode and it's the same as a circular target just click and drag around and once it's done you'll see that it'll be a uh, it'll give you the outline of the sphere and plus a center target or center mark and I'm going to do the same for all of these now in some cases if you get some overlap between the spheres because the angle is just uh, uh, just such that you know they're overlapping then obviously you won't be able to to use it um, another thing with the spherical marking see just as, like in this case it's not exactly centered and sometimes depending on where you select and depending on the contrast um, you may or may not uh, get a decent result so I'm just going to choose something to the side here a little bit and go like this and yeah that looks much better so it looks, it looks a little bit better so I'm going to go here I'm going to do the same thing and let's see what it says okay that's good and I'm going to do this final one up here like that and I've got two more in the other in the other here. So now you see the this blue ball here, this blue sphere with a white background is actually a good contrast. So up here it's not as good. So um, you know if you're going to be using spheres or something like that, it's always important to use the darkest color. Um, so now these I was actually using these for another project. So um, yeah, it, they they're blue, but they're working. Now, so I've got these spheres all marked. Now I haven't referenced them yet so you can do that the same way so if I just click on one here in this photo I can just hit the R key for referencing and when I go through because my project is processed already you'll see that I get this this uh, line here and it's called an epipolar line and this is what's gonna guide me and say hey you know we think that point is somewhere along this line so when I click to reference that other point in this photo now it's referenced but look what happens when I go to a second photograph now I have two epipolar lines and where they cross if, if they cross the right location it's telling me hey that's where we think the center is so I'm gonna do that here and you will see here now I've got three lines and I'm gonna do that here so it looks like they're, they're going uh, quite well here now you'll notice that my residual starts to go up as I'm marking these but what I'm gonna do is I can add these to the uh, process as I go through and okay so these look like they're all, they're all marked and what I will do often is I'll just reprocess to minimize the error and you'll see I'm down it's gone up to a little bit to like 1.33 and I think the reason for that is that some of the uh, spheres were probably not marked perfectly and if they were a little bit higher contrast to the background it would make or do a better job okay but they're, they are reference and they are created in 3d now I'm going to move on to the cylinder so cylinder marking mode is uh, pretty simple to do. Uh, it's this icon up here, so mark cylinders mode, the shortcut key is 8. When I click that, all I need to do is mark the outer edges of the cylinder. So I'm going to start from here, and I'm going to go to the tip, and I'm going to say there, and I'm going to do the same at the bottom. I'm going to go down this way, and I'm going to go up here like that. So I have to repeat that procedure in all the photographs and once I've marked them again the, the procedure is always the same it's mark reference mark reference and uh, 
if you're doing it the first time, then you have to process. But if you uh, have already have a process project, it will create this for you after you reference it. Okay, so I'm going to do one here. And it's always a good idea with the cylinders to get good angles. If you're at very low angles, almost like you're looking down the tip of the rod, it's not probably going to mark all that well. But in this case, I seem like I have some pretty good angles here. So let me go up here to the center or where it meets the wall. Okay, and I'll do this one. See, this one's not so great. You see, I'm, I'm kind of looking down the center of it, so I will. I may avoid doing this one in this case. So, but what I will do right now is I'm going to reference. So I'm just going to go back to select mode, select my first cylinder, click on the reference key, click here, and click on this one here. So it's created a cylinder now, and I haven't shown any of you any of this in 3D yet, 3D yet, but I will. I can assure you that it's there. If I hit F7, we can go to the 3D view, and you will see that I have a cylinder, and it's off to the side. It's got arbitrary axis right now, so or, or orientation, but you can see here that I've actually got a cylinder, and that's the cylinder that, that I just created. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the targets here, and these, because they're circular targets, I'm just going to use the subpixel target marking mode, and the same thing. I'm going to go through one photograph to the other, I'm going to mark them and then I'm going to ref reference them. So uh, I'm going to pause it just to save a, a few seconds here and then I'll come back after it's referenced. Okay, so I've gone through and I've basically marked uh, all the points except for the corner points of the wall, but the targets are all marked. And I found that I had a couple more uh, points that I didn't uh, reference, so that's all done now. Now I haven't processed, I'm at 1.62. Uh, max residual. So I'm just going to hit F5 again and reprocess the project now that everything is together. And now I'm down to 1.4, which is not bad, which is uh, which is which is pretty good in the in the big picture here. So uh, I've got the important parts marked, and now what I want to do is create the other lines. Now I obviously have a cylinder here, that's so that's already uh, defined. But what I need to do is create a line, and that line. I can do by uh, connecting any two 3D points. So in this case, I want to create a line between the two spheres. So all I need to do is go to this uh, mark lines mode, which is the shortcut key uh, four, and click on one point and the other point. And right click and click end draw, and you'll see that I've created a point in the 3D view. Okay, or I've, sorry, I've created, and you, and you can see that I've created a line in the 3D view. So uh, that being done, uh, now what I want to do is do the same thing for the bottom set of targets, but I can click on the tip, which would be the center of the rod, but I don't have a center point for this rod. So what do we do here? Well, uh, there's a neat little feature here, and the drop down up here on this curvy icon that looks like an S with two points, curve through points, Alt plus 7. And what you can do is click on these points in order, like that, and I'm going to click on the all four points here on, on the photo and it created uh, what looks like a circle but what I'm going to do is click on that curve right click and go to properties and I'll bring this up in the screen and one of the options here is that you can tell it to make it a perfect circle and that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to hit OK and what it's just done is obviously um, created a point you can see here now it just pops up in the center which is the center of that circle but it also made it a perfect circle so the edges are not uh, bent or anything uh, they are uh, it's it's perfectly circular now so what I want to do is connect this center point with point 149 which I believe this is this point here now another option in the 3d view if I click on the little gear down here these are the options for the 3d view and I go to vector types I can turn on for the points I can turn on their IDs and this is helpful too so you can relate what is in the uh, photographs to what is in the 3D view so 149 is the point that I'm looking for so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go back to lines mode up here and I'm gonna do this instead of doing it on the photograph I'm gonna do it on 3D view so I'm gonna click on the center point and then I'm gonna click on point 149 and you see that I've drawn a line there I'm just gonna hit and draw so at this point, I now have one, two, three trajectories. Uh, they're all set up, but I need to establish a scale and a and orient the axes as well. So that will be the next part of the process. Now, in fact, because we're doing a trajectory um, project and we're only interested in the angles, we actually don't have to place a scale because adding inches or, or centimeters or meters um, 
is not going to tell us anything about the angles. But uh, in a real world case, uh, this is something that you would want to definitely add. So to add a scale to the project, what we want to do is go up to this icon here. There's actually a couple of ways of doing this, uh, but this is uh, one of the simpler ways uh, for people who are just starting out, and that's the Scale Rotate Wizard. So I'm going to click on this icon, and it says choose the units that I want to use. Um, I'm going to use centimeters since we're here in Canada, and we use the metric system. I'm going to hit Next, and what it's asking me for is what is the distance between the two points that you've measured, and I'm going to say 36 point nine centimeters is the uh, scale that I checked and the two points when I once I click next is are going to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 now when I click this I need to shift click in order to get both points there to show up and I'm just gonna hit next so now it's already established the scale but it gives me an option if I want to finish the scale or if I want to continue to define the rotation as well well I do I want to set up you know what is my x and y axes so I'm going to hit next and in fact I'm going to start with the z-axis so I'm going to tell I'm going to tell it what is actually up and it says bottom to top so that's the direction that I need to choose now I had the corner points marked originally but I'm going to say that this bottom point here 32 and this point here 5 are in fact um, the true vertical and you can check that with a plumb bob you can check it, check it any way you want but that's what I'm going to be using as my reference uh, vertical axis. So I'll hit next. Oh, uh, sorry, I have to do that again. So that and that, and then hit next. So now that's established. And now what I'm going to do is do my X. So I have to choose from left to right to establish uh, the positive direction of the axis. And in this case, I'm going to choose 32, and I'm going to shift, hold shift down and choose 18. And once I do that, I hit finished and the 3D view jumps here. Now I'm going to do something in the 3D view. I'm going to go back to the setup here and I'm going to go to quality tools and I'm going to display a, uh, an axis in the corner and I am also going to go to view and I'm going to hit orthographic view and hit OK. So just so we remove the perspective. So when I go when I hit the reset button uh, what you'll see is that all the points that were on the face of the wall well they are in fact um, on the same surface, they're they're all aligned properly. They're not sort of jumping on uh, all over the place. So that's what we want. We've got the three trajectories. So it looks like we're pretty much all set set up with measurements and ready to take some angled measurements. Okay, so now that I've established my axes directions, I can now take um, measurements of the angles. And of course, if you choose the axes wrong or you choose uh, different axes you'll have different measurements so it's always with respect to where you've chosen the axis so that's an important point when you're setting up a project like this to make sure things are vertical or if they're not vertical how far off from vertical it is so you can um, compensate for that in the measurements so I've got a top-down view here and I'll just take this one uh, this one trajectory rod here for example so that's the one with the two spheres and I'm gonna hit, I'm, I've selected it already, but I'm gonna hit the M key. Actually, I'll clear this just so to avoid the confusion. But one, I'll select it again, and it brings up. I'm gonna close the images here. I'll move this over so we have more room. Um, and you'll notice that once I selected it, it gives me angles relative to the uh, x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So at the moment, you can see I'm looking straight down on the z-axis down here. I've got my y-axis this way and my x-axis this way. So the angle of this relative to the x-axis, which is this way, uh, it's telling me that it's 79 degrees. Now, it always gives me the smallest angle to the x-axis. So another way I can sort of look at this, if I select this angle and go like this, and I really get it up close, um, if we assume this is the vertical, uh, which it should be close to, and this line goes down this way. Well, the angle from here to this line, this way, is about um, is about 79 degrees, so almost 80 degrees. And so keep that in mind. If you were looking at it from the other way, or if you chose a different reference along the x-axis, then you know that would be you know 90 plus 10, or just over uh, um, 100 degrees, or something like that. Now, um, if we want to check it the other way, so the angle uh, this is the, the azimuth or the horizontal angle if we want to check it the other way uh, let's look at it from the side so I'm gonna look at it from the right side and I'm gonna reset this 
now we have this angle this is the same trajectory rod and you see assume it that, that this is it's, it's aligning it now as straight as it can so now this is the z-axis and if you look at the angle that this makes now the measurement that it gives us here is 59.8 so almost 60 degrees so it's the smallest angle so that would be from here to here to this vertical so it's the smallest angle this way and that's 60 degrees so um, that's basically how you would do the angle measurements uh, for your trajectories and of course for the other angles uh, all I need to do is select them and again I get the same result I get the readouts here as well and I would read them out the same way so the, the azimuth would be 75 degrees and the vertical uh, vertical here would be like 74.23 for this one and the last one down here select that and again 87 degrees and 86.6 .6. so good luck with it and thanks for listening